This video was released one day early for my Patreon patrons, link in the description. Hello everybody and welcome to this episode of creating a horror game from scratch. Today's episode is going to be a little bit shorter because I am exhausted and for my own respect and boundaries I just have to make it a little shorter but that's okay because we're going to wrap up what we started last time which was the options menu and the main menu. I also recommend you learn what your boundaries are when it comes to work so that way you don't overwork yourself and cause yourself to burn out or end up coming up with like a ton of negative things about yourself because you're not working, but in reality, it's because you're tired. You're not lazy, you're tired. Anyway, enough of the soapbox, let's get started. If you remember last time, it was almost working. Uh, if we hit play, it loads us into the level. Of course, we then can't move around. Um, another issue was whenever we would hit the options menu, it would appear the main menu would also stay there though, which was an issue. But also our master volume currently does not actually save. It does should work if you've set up your sound cues correctly. However, see how it's down here. If we hit back and then hit options, it'll come back to the default value. So we need to get that saved as well. Let's start by making the main menu actually disappear. In order to do that, it's actually quite simple. In our widget main menu, um, on the on released for our options button, at the very end here, we simply need to drag out and create remove from parent, and it's just going to target self. So basically all it's saying is, hey, after you've done all of your operations, remove yourself from the screen. By default, the options menu that I created for you in the last episode should already have the code to then bring the main menu back. And we did that by updating the parent. We update the parent so that way it knows what widget is going to return whenever we hit back. So now whenever we hit play, you'll note that when we hit options, the main menu does go away as intended. And when we hit back, the options menu returns. So that was a simple fix there. The next one is a little bit more difficult. It kind of depends how your level is going to play because what we're gonna tackle now is when we hit play and the level loads, as you can see, we can't really control anything. And that's because if you remember, if we go to our main menus level blueprint, we did something where we basically took the player's control away. We set the input mode to UI only, and we made it so that the mouse cursor was present on the screen. This persists through the level switch, so there's a couple ways we can go about this. One way would be on the main menu when they hit the play button, we return the ability to move around to them. Or, and I think a more controlled way to do it, is let's go over to our actual um, security office level. And if we head over to its level blueprint, in here, we can either make something to where it's like on event begin play, we return control to the player. But you have to remember if you do that, what's gonna happen is if you want a cut scene or anything to happen whenever the game starts, it's immediately going to give them control again. So consider how you want your level set up, then give them control. For me, for now, we're just gonna create a custom event that we call on event begin play that gives them their control back. Give player control. I think that works for me. We're gonna pull out, we're gonna hit set game mode to game only out of the player controller we're simply going to get player controller pretty simple then out of player controller i'm actually going to bring this down a peg or two i'm going to pull out and i'm going to type in set show mouse cursor we're going to get this nice and plugged in and set it to false we'll go ahead and make this a comment and simply say return the player's ability to move around and look around. What we're gonna do now is come up to the event begin play and just simply add this to the very end of our event begin play string. So we'll just type in the word, I guess it's not return, what is it? Give, that's right. Give player control, we'll give that back. 
and now the player will have control whenever they enter the level. So let's go ahead and hit Control Shift S and get all of that saved. Let's return to the main menu and hit the play button. Now, obviously, we have control over the, the menu options. We can hit back, it's all working as intended. And when I hit play now, however, now I actually have control over my character and uh, yeah, working as intended. Nice, we are knocking stuff out. Now the one that's a little more complicated. Now we need to set it up so whenever the player, this is in the widget options menu, by the way, which specifically it's right here at the bottom on the left. Um, whenever the player changes the master volume, it actually saves that variable somewhere for that variable to be then be saved to an actual save file. Because if you remember, by default, the Unreal Engine does not save things like slider values. So what we're gonna do is essentially, um, I'm just going to, do we have a game instance ref? We don't have a game instance ref which is interesting. I'm gonna skip forward as I ponder exactly how we're gonna update that variable. I think I'm simply gonna do a cast. Um, we don't need to make it a variable. I think a cast is very simple here. So let's just cast to my game instance or whatever it is that you named it. Of course, the object will simply be to get, a, oh, not get the game instance, but instead just get game instance. I drug mine over slightly so I could expand the comment just a little bit further here. And then as my game instance, we are simply going to set master volume, plug this in like that. And essentially this value here, we need to get it plugged into this. There's multiple ways you can do this to make it look good. I'm gonna do it the um, kind of the, the ham-fisted way of doing it, of just dragging it around. You can go about it how you like. Uh, you could even make this a variable, update the variable, then plug it in over here. It's really up to you, but this is how I'm gonna do it. So now we need to double check how the game is actually being saved, because we need to call the game being saved, because that's code we have to write. And I need to see if we've done that. So I'm gonna head over to our systems folder and I'm going to open up the game instance. Let's double check where we're currently saving. So we have this function. I remember setting it up last time. We create the save game. We double check if it exists. Um, we load it and then we set it and then we save it to slot. So the code is actually already set up. So all we need to do now is head back to the options menu. And as a game instance, we then hit save master volume like that. As you'll see, I'll need to create a little bit more space here. So I'm gonna drag this out and really expand this comment so we have some space. And that should do it. If everything is correct, which I believe it is, we should be able to now hit play, go to options, uh, change the master volume to something. It might lag a little when you move it just slightly. Uh, actually, you know what, we can't, I just realized, the reason it's lagging is the cast. So sorry for the misinformation. The reason we can't cast on this is because think about it, when we move that slider from point A to point B, it's gonna cross up to a hundred different values and that means it's going to cast up to a hundred times. Uh, so we need to definitely not cast each and every time. Uh, so let's go ahead and make some space and expand this comment. There, I gave myself plenty of work room. I'm gonna bring all this down. Oh, and, and the node, please. Bring all this down and instead of this exact setup, instead what we're going to do is I'm gonna delete these final two steps first. Then as my game instance, we are going to promote it to a variable. I'm gonna rename that variable to just game instance ref. And now I'm gonna teach you something cool. You can continue to do the is valid, which we've done a hundred times, where you go get the question mark and you plug it all in, which is perfectly fine. In fact, there's a lot of times where you need to do that. However, I'm gonna show you something super cool. We're gonna disconnect this code and bring it down. Uh, instead, what we're gonna do on the game instance ref, we're gonna pull it out and we're gonna hit get. 
Now on this node, if you right click it, you can convert to a validated Git. This is the exact same thing as getting the is valid and plugging in the variable. This is just a condensed version because it's specifically for that variable. It's the same thing, just a bit more condensed and an easier way to go about it. So we're gonna plug it into this Git. If it is valid, obviously we don't need to cast. However, if it is not, we will need to cast and we will need to go ahead and set that variable. Then um, I'm just gonna do it from here. We're gonna pull out and we're gonna type in save master, or no, first set. We're gonna set the master volume first. So regardless of whether it was valid or not, we officially are going to start plugging into these. So we're gonna set the master volume, which of course is going to be this value. So let's continue to keep this clean and unplug this. And we're going to unplug this as well. Let's drag this over. We're gonna create an additional variable here. So we're gonna go up to our variables and we're gonna add master volume. We're going to set that as a float. Wait, what do you mean? It's not being used. That's fine. If it, if you can just, it doesn't matter. Oh. So the reason it yelled at us is because master volume is being set even though the game instance is the target, that is why it yelled at us, that makes sense. But that's fine. We're gonna go ahead and set this. So whenever it updates, it sets this variable. And then now we can use this variable as our um, way to connect these to keep it up a little bit more clean. So, so on value update, set the variable, set the actual mix class override double check our game instance is valid. If it's not, create it. If it is, or after we create it, we will set the master volume. And then of course we will then save the master volume. There we go. So this is a lot more clean and efficient way to do what I was doing besides casting every single time, which I now realize was really silly. As you can tell, I'm very tired. Oh. Save master volume is not connected to the game instance ref, so now it is. So now I can actually save and compile. If we head back to our main menu, now when I hit options and I like drag this down and hit back and then go to options, it didn't save one moment, please. Okay, so right now the master volume is not currently bound to anything. So therefore it's always gonna load at 0.75. So what we need to do is we need to have a value that updates depend whenever the options menu is created uh, to whatever the current value is. So what we need to do is basically, there's an event if we type in event construct, whenever the widget is loaded on screen, that's when event construct happens. So since we have a game instance ref, we're gonna go ahead and get it. We're gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna convert it to a validated Git. And honestly, I'm thinking at this point, what we should do on the event construct, I'm just gonna bring it all the way to the top here. I'm gonna remove this setting here because we're just gonna make this happen on the event construct and then we don't have to call it here. I hope that makes sense. I don't know why I plugged it in like that. There we go. Plus look how much smaller our comment can be and how more condensed this code is now. <laughs> so on event construct, basically all we need to do is check and see if it's there. If it's not, I, I, cut, I cut this by the way. Um, we're gonna cast in my game instance. We're gonna actually set up the variable and then we're gonna take our master volume. We're gonna hit set and out of the game instance ref, we're also gonna just get the master volume. Cause as of right now, I am so sorry guys, I am struggling hard. This is incorrect, one sec. What we need to do is we need to create something that will then go into our save file and update the game instance to the current level that the user has saved. So we're gonna create another custom event. This is in my game instance. We are going to load the master volume and it's gonna be very similar to the top here. Basically, all we're gonna do is, we can even copy paste this. We're gonna double check it exists, get a branch. 
we're going to create it if it doesn't. Uh, however, we're not going to do the save game ref. So we're just going to go ahead and hit copy and paste like this. Or actually, what am I doing? This goes into the does save game exist. I'm telling you guys, I am struggling. I'm trying as hard as I can. Okay, so we double check the save game exists. Um, I'm actually gonna delete this as well because if the save game doesn't exist, we don't want anything to happen because they've never saved variables because if they had, it, we, they would have the file. So since it doesn't exist, don't do anything. If it does exist, what we need to do is we need to load game from slot like this. And what you're going to do is you're just going to match up the slot name with whatever you saved it as. So mine's save game. So I'm just going to write in save game out of the object. I'm going to cast to my save game. So that way we have access to the specific variables um, as my save game. We are going to then get the master volume and we will set the game instances master volume to the same one that is in the um, save game. Now we need to consider when to call this, because if we call this constantly, what's gonna happen is we'll never be able to change it. So let me go ahead and make a comment really quick. Load master volume. Call this once when creating the options widget. And we'll go ahead and save and compile that. So back over in our options menu, we need to consider this. So when the options menu is constructed, so that would mean they've had no opportunity to change anything yet. So I think that's a valid time to load it. What we're gonna do out of the game instance ref is we are going to just simply hit load master volume. Because remember, if the save game doesn't exist, we told the code not to do anything. So we should never actually get like an error from this. And now, uh oh, what's going on? It says my game instance needs a target. Oh, this is because we deleted that code. You just use your variable. So something like that, go ahead and save and compile. Now, if I'm not mistaken, it should operate the way we want it to. So when we hit options menu, this is the default value because we've never saved it to the save game before. But when we hit back and we hit back, if we've called the save game, and I don't know if we have, oh goodness, I don't think we did. If we hit options, it's back up there. We need to call the save game. Okay, I have to change this just slightly. We're gonna delete out the load master volume from here and just run with me on this. So that way, basically it just double checks that the uh, reference is created. And if not, it does create the reference. And then anytime we want this to load settings, what we'll do is we'll simply just get the game instance ref and add this to the end where we load the master volume. So that way now we know anytime all the other buttons are being loaded, it's also loading the master volume. And then the last thing we need to do is we never bound it to anything. So with this master volume slider selected, go over here and we're gonna bind that to the variable we created called master volume. And then if we hit save and wait, we're gonna bind it to game instance ref master volume and hit save and compile. Now we should be able to change it and it should save. So yeah, we take it, we move it there, we hit back, we go to options and check it out. Now it's saving exactly where it should be saving and it's remembering between loads. Thank God. Sorry this one was a bit short and I'm sorry that I'm very spacey. I'm exhausted, so give me a break on this one. Thank you so much for watching and supporting the series. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next episode.